Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Eicher here, coming at you with part two of a linear programming lesson. We'll look at two word problems. We'll do almost the whole word problem, but you'll have a couple try this is at the end. So number two, we have a painter has exactly 32 units of yellow dye and 54 units of green dye. She plans to mix as many gallons as possible of each color A and B. Each gallon of color A requires four units of yellow dye and one unit of green dye. Each gallon of unit, uh, each gallon of color B requires one unit of yellow dye and six units of green dye. Find the maximum number of gallons she can mix. So first define variables. In this case, we've defined them for you. We'll let x be the gallons of A. So this x down here equals number of gallons of color A. And then the y on this side would be gallons of B. Gallons of B. Uh, write a system of inequalities. This is typically the uh, tricky part, but with my highlighter, let's highlight the similar units. So remember, we will collect similar units for this system of inequalities. So we have 32 units of yellow dye. The other unit of yellow dye we have is right here, four units of yellow dye for gallon A, and then one unit of yellow dye for gallon B. So really helpful if you've printed this page to take a highlighter out or a different color pen and circle those or highlight those so you can capture those. So all that information would tell us this. If gallon of color A is four units and X is representing the gallons of A, that would be four X plus one of yellow when it comes to gallon B, so one Y. And we have 32 total. We can't use more than that, but we can use less than or equal to 32. So this is our uh, yellow dye equation, which I'll highlight in yellow. And then we have information about green dye. We have 54 units of green dye. We have one unit of green dye. And we have six units of green dye. So writing that, that would be one unit of green dye per gallon of A, which is represented as X. And we have six units of green dye in the other type of gallon, which is represented by Y. And we have a total of 54 units. And that's our green dye constraint. So that would be our green dye constraint, which I'll highlight in yellow, or sorry, in green, obviously not yellow. Uh, and then technically we have two other constraints. The number of gallons of X has to be greater than or equal to zero, and the number of gallons of Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So those are typical constraints that you see in a lot of linear programming problems that we'll do, uh, that you only are working the first quadrant, the positive X's and the positive Y's. So um, I guess before we graph, well it says graph on D, so let's write a function to represent the number of gallons. So we've really used up all the information. So this could be a little tricky, but notice what you're trying to maximize. You're trying to maximize the number of gallons. So that's what our goal is. We want to maximize number of gallons. So to maximize number of gallons, our function here, f of x comma y, would just be how many x plus how many y we can create. All right, so let's graph these lines. Uh, the first line here, uh, if we wrote this equation in slope-intercept form, we'd have y is greater than or equal to subtract 4x, add 32. So we'll graph that line. That would be a y-intercept of 32 and a slope of negative 4. So we're going to go down 4 over 1. There we go. Uh, and then so our first constraint is this one. This is our yellow dye constraint. That constraints the yellow dye constraint. Uh, and then this next equation here, if we write that in slope-intercept form, we would subtract 1x from both sides and divide by 6. So you'd have y is less than negative 1 sixth x plus 54 over 6, since we divide both sides by that 6. So that would be 9. So we're going to have a y-intercept of 9 get that 9 from that equation right there. That right there is 9. 
And then we're going to go down one over six. Down one over six. Ooh, nice. It's right there. Down one over six. I think is right there. And then it's going to keep going, but really we just need to know where those two lines intersect. So this line represents our green constraint, our green die constraint. And both of these are less than, so uh, I didn't do shading on the first one, but it would be shaded here. The next one would be shaded this way. And you can see where they overlap. Uh, and we're bounded by the axes because we have to have a positive number of gallons of paint. So our shaded region, our feasible region, would be this region here, everything in here. So I believe that we have our um, graph finished. Um, so as we try this, I'd like you to state the vertices of the feasible region and then find the maximum number of gallons of each color that could be made. So based on that, in our given constraints, figure out the maximum number of gallons that could be made. Uh, and that's a linear programming word problem. Um, the last one that we'll do is number three. Get started on that. A uh, lunch stand makes 75 cents in profit on each chef's salad and 100, yeah, 100, ooh, that's expensive. A dollar 20 in profit on each Caesar salad. On a typical weekday, it sells between 40 and 60 chef's salads and between 35 and 60 Caesar salads. The total number sold has never exceeded 100 salads. How many of each type of salad should be prepared to maximize profit? So um, we've defined for you, we'll let X be the number of chef salads and Y be the number of Caesar salads. So down here is chef's salads is X. And then this axis Y is Caesar salads. So write a system of inequalities. Let's collect the similar units. So collecting similar units, we have the dollar amounts, but typically the dollar amounts are used in the objective function because that's what we're trying to maximize. And that's what I'd like you to write on part B as we try this. Um, but so far we've highlighted all the green, all the dollar amounts. That's what we're trying to maximize. So let's look at the other. It says typically it sells between 40 and 60 chef salads. So between 40 and 60 chef salads, that would be chef salads is X. So X has to be between 40 and 60. So that's our chef inequality. Um, that's not a Y equals MX plus B. That's just total number of chef salads. I'll highlight that. Uh, and then the other information we have is we have between 35 and 50 Caesar salads. So we could state that as Caesar salad is Y. So Y has to be between 35 and 50, and that's our Caesar information. Uh, and then lastly, there's one last comment that the total number of salads has never, never exceeded 100. So we need a total constraint. Our total constraint is if you add the number of uh, chef salads plus the number of Caesar salads, that's never been bigger than 100. So we'd have x plus y is less than or equal to 100. And then we can graph those. Uh, 40 on the x is here. 60 on the x is here. And that would be everything in between. So we're shaded inside here now. And then 35 is right about here. And to 50 is right about here. And everything between those would be in there. Uh, and then lastly, x plus y is less than or equal to 100. That would have an x-intercept of, or sorry, a y-intercept of 100 and an x-intercept of 100. So plotting those two points, we have 100 and 100. The slope is 1. So this would be our x plus y is less than or equal to 100 boundary, our constraint. And it's less than that. So we want to be in this region. We're below this line. So we have this real small region in here that we're talking about. This small region in here. So it looks like we have vertices here, 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 and here. So we have five vertices. So what I would like you to do is B, write the objective function 
make sure you use the correct notation, the function notation. We've already graphed the system, so you don't have to do that part. I'd like you to state the vertices, which we have the graph, so make sure you can clearly identify those vertices. And then finally, find the maximum number of chef and Caesar salads by using the objective function to determine how would you maximize the profit. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.